From our information, Enki and Enlil were peoples and not individuals. Too bad my sources cannot be cited. But the concept is reliable and it is there. And I will explain it. What are your sources? Federation and Taigeta Computers Records. However, as you have already been told, it is known that those who created the Sumerian tablets were the same group of people, although earlier it is true, as those who collected the Old Testament material. Therefore, together with the other data that there are no records of any Enlil or any Enki, outside the terrestrial saga, we can conclude with certain reliability that the tablets were also written with the same double code system that implies that the names are peoples, not directly under those names, and not individuals. What we do have records of is the existence of Shiva, Anu, Ishtar, Osiris, among others. I cannot prove this to you with data verifiable by you because it is information outside of the Earth. Some people with still respect insist that Enlil and Enki caused the flood to reset humanity. But this again is full of theological overtones of Enki and Enlil as gods, with the power to do that, cause a deluge at will. But it does not explain how they did it, making it fall into more theology and misinterpreted myths of gods. We are telling you how the flood happened, and it is because of something natural, explainable and predictable. A cosmic event of disaster. disaster. I do not believe in Enki and Li, gods with powers, nor do I believe in test tube genetic manipulation when here I have the answers to how the human limitation has been achieved. Mind control plus matrix frequencies. According to records on Earth itself, of experts on the subject, not only from here, the name of Enki is given to Akhenaten. Why? Enki, Akhenaten. Enki is tagged as the good one of the two brothers, right? The one who gives the liberating information to the humans. The one that tells them how to live. The one that gives them ethical bases that separate them from the minor peoples, pagans. Connecting it to other historians, Definite proof has been found that Akhenaten is Moses, as the one who guides the chosen people to their promised land, Israel. So the one who gives them the Ten Commandments and gives them ethical basis is Enki, the one who talks to the burning bush and the one who tells them to stay away from worshipping the bull. The bull is Taurus, the constellation Tauro. All over the planet, cows and bulls 
are perceived as the highest animal deity, and in almost all, if not all, cultures. Akhenaten, Enki, and Ramses II, and Lil. By association, Enlil can be interpreted as Egypt, people of, were brothers, sons of Egypt. That's why they fought, because of contradicting beliefs. Akhenaten liberated or gave liberating knowledge to humans, the part of the people of Egypt that followed him freeing them from the oppression of Ramses II and Lil. It can also be said that Enki is people of Israel and Enlil people of Egypt. Brothers, sons of Egypt both. This predates the Sumerian tablets. Akhenaton changes his name to Akhenaten, which means Aten is pleased. Enlil represents the Egyptian group that follows the god Amon and the entire millennial religious system, and Enki represents the Egyptian group that followed the solar god Aten the group that follows Moses, Akhenaten, the one called Enki. And note that it is used here as an attribute of a person. The people of Israel in the Exodus were nothing more than a group of Egyptians who followed Akhenaten, who wanted to impose another creed on them distancing them from the theological base of Egypt, the solar cult of Ra. Akhenaten had the opposite cult of Ra, the cult of the Black Sun. So Enki is translated as the people of Israel. This symbolizes Ra, the sun, but there is more hidden there. The people of Israel is Isis, Ra, Anu or the sun, El, Elohim coming from Enlil. Now I have a simple doubt. The name Akhenaton is Spanishized, it seems. Akhenaten is correct. I do not agree with adapting regionally these names because it causes confusion. Akhenaten can also be translated as Aten's effective spirit. I see this one more accurate because Akhenaten claimed the right to be the only one who can connect with the new god Aten, Aten himself on earth. This infuriated the traditionalist Egyptian clergymen and the normal population. The problem also with all these Egyptians is that they did not use just one name. They were assigned names for various reasons. From the point of view of the clergy, social status, or every time they wanted to pin an attribute on someone, or when that attribute is hung on them. Akhenaten is also Amenhotep IV as an official name, but it changes depending on the point of view. Notice the Amen in Amenhotep. Amen is satisfied as meaning. That is why he changed his name from Amenhotep to Akhenaten. It can be interpreted the other way as well, but it is more stellar or of stellar knowledge. Enki is the people of Israel or Judaism and Enlil is 
Race of Elohi of Astarope, Pleiades. Name Elohim comes from them. Although on Earth, multiple races are thrown into the mix to describe as Elohim. Remember, it is associated on Earth, in myth and in tablet or scrolls, papyrus. So it's a human association. In space, the name Elohim is referring to the races of Asterope, Elohi and Nepf. They are found in other places, as in bases or colonies, but Asterope is their home planet. So if you ask if Tigetans, Engans and others are included in the Elohim category, not in space, as it is a completely different species. But be careful here, because on Earth they commonly tend to associate them all together. All star races that were influencing Sumer, Babylon, Egypt and all the Middle East before the time of Vespasian Titus, Christ. I mean everything before Christ. Elohi, Tigetans, Engen, Solation, all associated as Elohim. Positive reptilian races also have been categorized as Elohim. Elohi from Asterope are anthropomorphic, but a bit dissimilar to humans, towards what humans would call deformed or strange would not pass as human on the street, although people might think that person has bad birth defects like long crooked legs and a short spine, elongated chin and elongated skull. Of course, related to the elongated skulls found. They have beards, but not as much beard as a Tigetan or as an Engan but much more beard than a solation that hardly has any, if any. Variant of Asterope Elohi are the Nef, also related to Nephilim, also Asterope. So yes, Enki, people of Israel, and Enlil were opposed one to the other, and they fought, as the Sumerian tablets say. That fight is the one that ended up with the expulsion of Akhenaten and his followers Enki from Egypt by Ramses II, who believed in the deities of Triangulum, including the star Enlil. Enlil represents the previous religious beliefs observed in Egypt. Based on the gods Ea, Yahweh, Enlil, Elohim, or Anu, Ra. Since Horus, Christ, was the son of Osiris, Ra, and Isis, Ishtar. But Horus, the falcon, was not a man, it was a starship. That's why the hours, temporary navigation, the power to fly like a hawk. Hours, like what hour is it at this moment? Where in the sky is Horus, the sun, the ship? Enki and Enlil are energies that encompass groups of individuals that are from different societies and species. But they are not a whole species, but rather they are factions of civilizations, and each group of these societies that were made up of different species had different types of energy, some Enki and others Enlil. That is to say, 
They were not the same civilization, Enki and Enlil, but they were contemporaries, and they were not the same race either. But they are both children of Anu, which is the sun, because even if we speak of biological beings, esoterically speaking, although they had the same father, they had different energies. Esoterically speaking, they are opposite energies, Enki and Enlil, and they are sons of Anu, who is the sun. In the world of that time, energies, ideas, peoples and people were represented allegorically as characters. Enki and Enlil were brothers, sons of the god Anu. But Anu can be represented in various ways. The concept of Amon and the concept of Aten are both concepts of sun god, but they are opposites. Amon is the solar god of pre Akhenaten Egypt, and Aten is the new concept that Akhenaten tried to impose on the Egyptian people. Aten is also interpreted as black sun creating confusion here among those who only study one side or one part of the scene. Yes, both are solar god. Many interpret both as Anu, being that Amon and Aten are opposites or rivals. But Anu in any case could only be translated as Amon since it comes from pre akhenaten ancient Egypt. This very common confusion also occurs because these concepts of solar gods and their contexts are mixed between the Sumerian cultures and the Egyptian cultures that were more or less contemporary according to the matrix historians. But this is wrong, since in reality the Egyptian culture predates Sumer, and even more so because its roots come from Ireland, a fact that is already documented, but that the Matrix historians refuse to incorporate into their official writings. The concepts of Enki and Lil can have not one, but several interpretations in the manner of peoples, never as individuals, unless someone serves as the leader of those groups. But it is still not one person, but that attribute is passed on. This is especially noticeable in the case of Enki, who is first credited to Akhenaten, also Abraham, also Jesus Christ, but that in itself represents that social branch that is the Kabbal. So we have Enki, Kabbal, or also Enki, Arkan Corporation, Enki, People of Israel, that itself is the creation of the Kabbal. The concept that Enki is the good one between the two brothers is just part of their mind control and their attempt to have the people under their control oppose the other group, Enlil's. In the case of Enlil, it is clear because it comes from Elohi, Elohim, who is the main race that dominated the area of Sumeria and that strongly influenced Egypt as well. But that, in contrast to Enki, it can clearly be interpreted more widely as those who oppose Enki, 
those who oppose Akhenaten Nefertiti and his reforms in Egypt. Enki and Enlil comes from the conflict between Akhenaten Nefertiti, Enki, and Meritaten, Ramses II, Enlil. Enlil, those who oppose the Arkan Corporation. Enlil, those who oppose the Cabal. Both sons of the solar god Anu represented as Egypt or representing Egypt. People of Israel are nothing more than a group of Akhenaten followers, Egyptians, common Egyptians with another creed, nothing special. Those Egyptians, people of Israel, went on to found Rome. Rome had Caesars, and then the Caesars became the Pope. Rome never fell. It evolved. Reptilian family members or humans that work for reptilians. Rome, the Vatican, is still leading the world as it has for the last 2,500 years. And why are Jewish people so spread around the world? And what's the Zionism connection here? Zionism is nothing but a fanatic branch of the Vatican. It was created by them as a validation chosen people group. And it's false. Jews have nothing special in their genes. They are just people with a tag. Israel was created from the ashes of Second World War using the Holocaust as an excuse Propaganda, it was, and justification to commit a horrible crime against the people of Palestine, the true owners of that part of the world. The Holocaust did occur, but never and not even close to the amount of people that they say were killed in the concentration camps. One tortured and killed innocent Jew is too much and many were killed but not in the amount they say it was all engineered to justify the creation of the state of israel world war ii was partially made for that as one of the objectives for it as the cabal was controlling both sides the jews are ordinary people they don't have anything to look for in their genes. It's just something cultural, religious as a tag on them. But why were they so keen on creating the state of Israel? What was their objective? Among other objectives, to justify the Christian story, to have a foothold in the Middle East to create conflict, a military state supposedly besieged all around by Muslims, so all the time on the watch, making the world see Israel as an endangered state needing protection, when in fact it is the aggressor. Why are the names of Enki and Enlil associated? Because they seem to be two different groups. Because they are both children of Anu the sun. Both are children of Egypt, which is the sun. They are opposites, opposing esoteric energies. But like everything that the Cabal does and gives, it is the other way round, Enlil being the good side and Enki the bad side. Enlil represents stability, truth, trustworthiness and progressiveness. Enki represents falsehood, lies, deception, impersonation. Enki is the Kabbal. 
he represents the Cabal. Enki is the energy of the chosen people of Israel. He represents the church, the system established with lies. He represents the mind control of the matrix. And Lil represents the stellar, energy of gods outside the earth, what has always been the most expanded truth. And Lil can also be seen as the Elohim who came down to be taken for gods partly founders of Egypt. Being that what they want is to impose the matrix and mind control based on lies, Enki is seen as the good one and Enlil, who represents the most expanded truth, must be suppressed, removed, erased. The Enlil versus Enki conflict continues today and is what is experienced as the Earth problem because of the Cabal. And why are some called fallen angels? Where is that idea coming from? Is that reptilians calling all the positive ETs that? That is Christian myth, as in the angels, messengers, loyal to God, that fell out of grace. Biblical. Fallen angels, as in came from heaven, the sky, that also developed another name, Anunnaki, also meaning those who came down, not fell down, from the heavens, where Anunnaki is then later associated to reptilian races, wrongly. Anunnaki correctly used and referred to means or points out to the specific Pleiadian group of races that intervened or mingled with humans between 10,000 and year 0 BC. But in many texts, this mingling and taking the daughters of men as their wives is also referring to genetic engineering and not as in literally taking a wife and mating with her. The above-mentioned races who came down to Earth cannot produce offspring with humans. So this is more of a symbolism going on here, as in a cultural blend. They cannot produce offspring directly, but they can mate. And they also can degrade their stellar DNA after a few generations on Earth where a Tigetan would become 3D because of the action of being under constant low 3D frequencies. This takes at least two or three generations of step-downs residing on Earth and not going back to space. Super interesting! And who is Anu, really? Regarding Anu specifically, I find a number of characters with similar names. He has many interpretations and is probably the god with most variants found in different cultures. Anu, Zeus, Jupiter, Odin, among others. We have more than one Anu. The first is a Pleiadian Tigetan explorer who arrived on Earth around 8 or 9,000 BC. He documented everything, left wisdom and left. The others seem to have no connection. Thank you. Another question. Other cultures like the Mayan one left tablets too. So those are also for mind control and other cultures as well? We would have to go tablet by tablet, but those were made much later than the Sumerian ones. They are recorded information according to what was said to them of the Sumerian ones. An example of this is Quetzalcoatl, who was not exactly a person or a feathered god 
As we have seen previously, it was a ship. Another question from a follower: Amon is the sun, and Aten is the black sun, Saturn. In the church, it is often said, "Amen," which is nothing more than invoking Amon. It's hard to believe that those who have designed everything in the church do not realize that they are making people say. The name of the good sun, and have not made people say "Aten" instead of "Amen," because they are not taking into account that the cabal psychopaths, the controllers, move in duality, with white squares and black squares. In itself, it is the same. It is solar worship. It is balancing karma for them. And yes, it is true. Amen comes from Amen Ra or Amon Ra. Swaru, what does this image mean? That of the winged bull with a human head. Why the body of a bull with the wings and the head of an Anunnaki? The bull or Toro Apis is a symbol of Taurus, but it comes from Egypt way, way back. During the time it was a base or colony, it means the constellation of Taurus, Pleiades mainly, with Aldebaran on the horn, among other inhabited constellations. The head is the sun, meaning that it is a worship of the solar god. It is the same symbolic tendency as in the Sphinx. The body of an animal representative of an era, with a human head, assigned to solar god plus physical god's Elohim. The one that is winged means that it flies, that it is in the heavens, but it also means Pleiades, because it is our symbol, everything winged. Such as angels and archangels. In the top one, the image has a pet lion. From the point of view of the Elohim, it is a cat. It also means that the Elohim have cats as their preferred pets. Note how modern Taigeta ships also have a lot of cat on board. The cat, represented as a lion. Has caused speculations such as the Elohim were giants, but rather it is a symbolism of how great they were in the aspect of their qualities as people. The lion cat is also elusive to Egypt, because although these images are Sumerian Babylonian, the Elohim in general come from Egypt. Since it is much older. A question about the previous image: the bull with wings and a human head. Were those who represented themselves in this way positive, the Elohim? Yes, but it depends who you ask. They represent Elohim as from Pleiades, the ones who started it all. Elohi, Engan, Solations, and. I get them. They take them all as Anunnaki. They are wrong. They confuse it or mix it with Nephilim concepts already loaded with biblical symbolism, as with fallen angels. Yes, Elohim and Anunnaki are two different things, although they are both Anunnaki. Some are humanomorphs, and the others reptiles. And now Anunnaki are referred to the regressive reptilian species. Yes, although the Anunnaki, strictly speaking, refer to those who came from above. In itself, in the context seen from the Earth, it refers to reptiles. Elohim should not then be connected with Anunnaki, because they are Lyrian, Elohi, Solation. Engen, Taigeta base, but with the associations of many scholars, they have already connected or mixed the concept of Anunnaki 
with that of Elohim, and worse still, with that of Nephilim. Of those Pleiadian races that came to Earth, are there any negative ones? I know we are talking about that inside the Elohi, from Astrope. In their interior, there could be anything, and some of their individuals, not in all, as happens here on Earth, if I understood correctly. But were all the races that you mentioned that interacted with humanity positive? And who were the Nephilim? Nephilim is something complex that I will review how it is defined on Earth. It refers to fallen angels, and it is like a basket where they throw all the Anunnaki and the Elohim together, all as Nephilim, contrary to Biblical God. In themselves as races, if they are from Pleiades, they are not regressive, none. The Council of Alcyone or Council of Nine is in charge of this. It is the same, but I understand that there is another one with the name of Council of Nine too. But in itself, you must also view what each person or each group does and not generalize that a species is good or bad. Just look at the positive Alpha Draco. But generally, if they are from Taigeta, they are positive as a race, overwhelmingly so. They are people, and there will be some bad apples, but that's with everything. Now, a word of caution and one that causes a lot of trouble. The same races have multiple names. Playaran, Taigetan, Centauri, Alfrata, Arcturians, Dieslintiplex, Corendians, Devonians, etc. Another point, all terminations in men's names finishing in L come from Elohim. In this world, it means he is like or is Enlil, from the gods, anyone with that name. The termination A in a Tigetan man name, like Kila, comes from Anu, another god as interpreted by human terms of old understanding. Elohi from Asterope, from what you said earlier, some of them have reptilian souls. They are reptiles? In some way, yes, but not as they say there, not everything is genetic. Elohim is a race that has multiple souls, some reptilian, some not, just like humans. But many look physically like an Engen or a Tigetan. Many people argument that there are reptilian races in the Pleiades star system. This is correct. But they are not a problem. They are as progressive as any other. But they don't interact as much with the other Lyrian more common races in the Pleiades because of their logical differences. There are cat races in the Pleiades as well the Hydeans. This part is quite confusing in my head for now, because it has been said at some point that they were reptiles, but I understand that their representation is human, but inside they are reptiles, yes? They look like the pictures, humanoid, but behind they are reptiles, yes? Not necessarily a reptile, most of them are Pleiadian souls of other races, including Taigeta. Not necessarily a reptile. Oh, that's confusing, sorry. Elohim is like humans. They all look humanoid, everyone. But some have a reptilian soul, not necessarily negative. Some Elohim have the color and features of a person of the black race of Earth, but most are Nordic whites. But what does reptile soul mean? 
the souls have no race, right? We only enter races when we choose to come to the body. What does reptile soul mean? Like reptile star seeds on Earth? The same as me with Tigetan soul in the human body? Souls have neither gender nor race, but they do have a predisposition to follow the reptile, their ideas, concepts and identity. That's what I mean. And that is equal to the reptile queen of the earth. She looks human, but she is not. So the reptiles incarnate in the Elohim in Pleiades? Well, yes. What for? Because being a starseed is not exclusive to humans on earth. Elohim is a race with starseeds from elsewhere. But don't associate reptilian with evil. But why do they do this? Here starseeds come to help with ascension or whatever. And there? Why is reptilian soul incarnated in Pleiades? To experience being an Elohim. Well, at that moment they would no longer be reptiles, as I cannot be called Tigetan, I am human. They are Pleiadians at that time, no? From that point of view, yes. Still, there is a strong reptile presence there. And when they die, where do they go back? To their reptile world? Do you have reptilian star seeds in the Tigetan society? Yes, but it is not very marked. And like everyone who dies, it will be whatever their frequency dictates and is compatible with. Those were the creators of the Kingu? No, those would be the Usungal. But another important point, Elohim for us refers to Elohi or the Pleiades. But from Earth's perspective, it is various races. Among those races are the Elohi, Taigeta, Engen, and Solation. Okay, the question that doesn't leave me alone. The reptiles of Atlantis were reptile in appearance, but were they Anunnaki too? What relationship did the Elohim have with the Anunnaki reptiles? Here I get a little confused. Thank you. I don't like the term Anunnaki at all. It is widely abused and causes a lot of confusion. It is used everywhere in the mystery world as the name of a race. But from my data, which are more precise, they call Anunnaki several races as if they were the same. Although Anunnaki strictly refers to those who from above came, where we Tigetans would also fall within the term Anunnaki, on Earth, it is constantly used or means invasive reptilian races, plural. It is being used as reptile races or they mean reptile races exclusively. I speak of Draconians, Nagas, Usungal and the Kingu. It should not be used as a race name. I would discard that Anunnaki name in all descriptions, except to speak of confusion, or using Anunnaki as the reptilian race set. I repeatedly see the concept of one invading race in the minds of awake humans. You should get rid of that idea, because it has always been a conglomerate of races working here. both on the good side and on the bad side. Only passing through time the baton of being the dominant race on or for Earth. It is not a race. It is a corporation, as some say. Speaking of the positive races, it could also be said that it is corporation. The Federation of United Planets or the Sphere Alliance, or the Andromeda Council, are multiracial corporations. However, 
even within a positive corporation, advanced progressive races tend to work mostly alone. As for Atlantis in particular, the dominant race there was the Usungal reptile, with the help or guidance of the Draco reptile. And it was not a one-race civilization, as it was an advanced planetary-level station of that invasive corporation. Osiris and Ishtar were of the Elohim race? No, they were considered of that race, but partially. But they were not of that race. In itself, Elohim as such were the bearded ones in Sumeria. They weren't giants, they just made them big, because they were big by attributes, not by size. Ishtar, as she is painted in history, even the one written by the Egyptians, never existed. The concept of her was based on visitors. Yes, Ishtar and Osiris were people. But the rest is added cream by the ancients themselves, because that was done a lot at that time. An example of this is the Greeks and their exaggerations about stories that did happen. For example, Medusa did exist, but it was not as the Greeks say. Medusa is none other than Ishtar herself again, but it is symbolism taken literally. And why do reptilians and masons use the Ishtar symbol? Because they are atonists or worshippers of the sun, but that comes from the Anki branch. Judaism is not monotheistic, that is false. The followers of Akhenaten, founders of Judaism, of the people of Israel, Enki. And the serpents of Medusa are the symbol of knowledge, in the same way that the Targetans, when passing as Evas, gave knowledge to Evas. That is why we can assure that the Sumerian tablets are just one more Bible, and people take them as absolute truths. They are structured exactly like the Old Testament Bible, and they use true facts, true events, just with a twist to fit into their agendas to validate what is said as true. Just because something is old does not mean that it is true. And the evidence, at least from our point of view, is strongly against what is said in the Sumerian tablets. Because if they were true, we wouldn't exist. I know they say that the tablets are like 5,000 years old. I am afraid it is not true. They are more recent, as we have already said. It's just that before Akhenaten and Nefertiti, Enki and Lil as Ea, Elohi, were Egyptian concepts, not Sumerian. But this is already too complicated for the average human mind. Now, the concept of opposing Enlil against Enki, from the Egyptian point of view, is the quarrel between Osiris, Enlil, and Anubis, Enki, where it is said that between Ishtar and Horus, they revive Osiris, the first concept of resurrection, and from where they get the idea for the resurrection of Christ, based on Egyptian astral theology. The human being created on earth, although I have no way of convincing at the moment, the greatest proof that it is rubbish 
is that there are at least 400,000 races, almost or identical to humans, out there. They cannot and could not have been created on Earth. With serpent scepters, knowledge including genetics, and Osiris with his erect member, as if the two created the human beings, as the Egyptians say, but they created them as guides, not genetically. Although that does transfer to a genetic lineage, yes. That's why the erect member of Osiris, being Ishtar's partner, they create the world, or Egypt, as their offspring. The problem here for normal people is that it is all a lot of elaborate and intertwined symbolism all the time that even changes meanings when in another context. Genesis as the genes of Isis, because from there the present humanity is born. Born, in the literal sense, the people of Egypt are born circa 10,000 BC, as a result of the intervention of Osiris and Ishtar. For them, the Egyptian people began, not that there were no humans before. And it happened with someone opposing, Anubis. Anubis himself, as the god of the underworld, is equal to Saturn, or the Black Sun. And yes, I accept certain genetic manipulation they are done by Ishtar, but as a basis for liberation, not for oppression, as a way to counteract the effects of the 3D matrix already implemented there recently. That's why I know how it was done because I was there, and it wasn't with a test tube. The topic of genetic manipulation in itself is a whole subject, because there was lab manipulation and from a number of races, especially reptilian, back in the Atlantis antediluvian times. And Ishtar also fiddled with genetics directly, but came to the conclusion that mind and population engineering was a better way to go to alter and to cleanse human DNA from mostly limiting reptilian changes done to them. This to accelerate the natural process of DNA returning to its original print or characteristics. I know I have been criticized a lot for saying that Enki and Enlil are more of a peoples. This is what happens. The Anunnaki tablets represent ancient wisdom for humans, and that is why they believe them. But from where I am, things look very different. And what is in the tablets differs totally from what is recorded as history, not only of my race, but of virtually all races of the Federation. The Sumerian tablets were created by the same group of people, although perhaps not the exact same people, I mean their group who created the Old Testament. And it is structured in a very similar way, where it is a set of other stories from various parts of the world, all condensed there to serve to validate an agenda. And to a large extent it is coded, so that someone without knowledge reads and interprets them in one way and the educated ones in another. It is the same with the Old Testament. As in the case of the Old Testament, historically 
everything makes more sense if we replace all the names of the characters there with the concept that they are peoples and not individuals. Adam becomes the Adamic people or race, men and women, and Eve also with the race of Eve. Cain and Abel quarreled, the peoples, and married. With whom if there are no more humans? Annoying question for theologians. With few exceptions like Moses being Akhenaten himself, a reptile. It is the same with the Sumerian tablets. They are better read as peoples and not as characters. I am not making up this information. Hundreds of historians and exo-archaeologists of my race and those of the Federation conclude that the Old Testament is similar to Sumerian tablets, at least in intention and structure. The Federation and Taigeta have detailed records of that time, because of Lemuria that was a Taigetan colony as has already been explained in a video, and no one finds who Enki or Enlil were. And knowing who the information comes from, exo-archaeologists from Taigeta and the rest of the Federation, we conclude that the Sumerian tablets were created for the same purpose as Old Testament – disinformation and mind control. The concept that these names should be interpreted as peoples and not as individuals is not alien to the earth. Because, speaking of the Old Testament, only there in this case, this has already been exposed by researchers such as Michael Sarion. Knowing that those who created the Sumerian tablets were reptilians and their henchmen, I conclude and declare that all this is reptilian disinformation. It's just another Old Testament, no more. And this is my data from here. Like it or not. I just want to add this on the subject, that I do not discredit the tablets entirely, because in themselves they have very valuable information. As does the Old Testament. But what I share is what I have as information from here. Like it or not, there is no corroboration outside of Earth, that's my point. Ergo, to the other star races, the Sumerian tablets are just like a pre-Old Testament Bible and more reptilian misinformation. My job is to share what I see and what is known here, and it is that. The tablets have no validity, being corroborated with stellar information. Stellar information that I accept that I cannot corroborate for you. But if I give corroborable information by you in hand, then you accuse me of only saying what is already on Earth. If I give new information, then what I say is very crazy. An extra important comment on the subject of Enki, Enlil, Anu and others. It is known that in other parts of the Earth, very far from Sumer, there are also texts that corroborate the existence of these characters. An example of this is in the Popol Vu, but it seems to me not only. What happens here is that the Anunnaki or reptiles had access to the whole world, and going from Sumer to Mesoamerica in a ship does not mean for them more than a journey of a few minutes. Their agenda was to control most of the population, and logically, they spread their information in all possible places. It must be remembered 
that they had a planetary civilization and not restricted only to the area of Sumeria. The Sumerian culture and its language were not the oldest. First, because Egypt predates them by something like 5,000 years. Although this would never be accepted by Kabbal historians who represent Egypt as a civilization up to 7,000 years younger than it is. Examples of this are the pyramids and the Sphinx, which are dated to around 3500 BC. When they are over, 12,500 years old. As Egypt is opposed to the Cabal and its interests, they have looted, monopolized, distorted and erased the vast majority of its history, degrading it from its true historical cultural value. But above all, they have dated Egypt and everything that happens within as more recent, younger than it is or was. It should also be seen that their dating systems, such as Carbon-14, is the most inaccurate, and other dating systems by strata and by historical records are also wrong, because the Sumerians themselves painted the events as older for antiquity politics reasons, as the Vatican has done by adding 300 years to the Gregorian calendar. This is very clear, and it cannot be argued here. This is precise stellar data. I know they discuss everything below. Enki and Enlil are erroneously related to the Sumerian culture only because they were the ones who most documented them. But their origins are Egyptian. Their exact origin of the concepts is at the time when Akhenaten and Nefertiti are expelled from Egypt. Right there, those concepts are born. The dating is wrong because they predate Sumeria and the tablets. All because of their interest to erase Egypt's true age and with it its cultural historical value. If we return everything to the actual dating, everything would fit perfectly. In summary, and as an extra interpretation for clarity, Enki and Enlil are opposite corporations, both born of Egypt. Egypt as a people, Anu. Each of these corporations, Egypt, Anu, Enki, allies of Akhenaten and Nefertiti, Enlil, stellar opponents of the Enki group allied with Egypt, were and still are made up of multiple races, not just one, even though Enlil can also be interpreted as Elohim. Enki and Enlil and their differences are nothing more than a quarrel between the conservative side in Egypt worshipping the solar god Amon and the Akhenaten Nefertiti side worshipping the black Saturn sun. Aten, a quarrel between Egyptians with the intervention of Stellars, which really was a quarrel between Stellars with the Egyptian people in between. And if parallel data are found in other parts of the world, it is only because they were part of a planetary civilization that like the church did centuries later using sailing ships, planted the same concepts for all other cultures but using starships, vimanas, using terms of the time. Notice the same trend of invasive evangelism, 
because they are exactly the same group. Triangulum has a portal. That portal, 12,000 years ago, was connected to the Pleiades, from where the Elohim, Anu and Yahweh came. These are these three stars, as always. It is from where the concept of Trinity was born. Yahweh is a creative act or the act of creation, not a person. This fact is known by some historians. It is a term of a sexual nature or origin, a great creative explosion with a patriarchal flavor. Hence, the esoteric imposed concept of the origin of the universe as a Big Bang, because the reasons for imposing concepts on people is always esoteric and not physical. As I have said before, the universe has always been, because it is atemporal and eternal, as it is infinite. The Big Bang is a Yahweh. But Yahweh, Ea, is not a person. It's more misinformation, more lies. Yahweh means release of contained energy. It is a concept. Yahweh is a description of a creative explosion after having contained energy. It is sex, ejaculation that creates when it falls on fertile soil. That is why the universe in the minds of the Saturnian Cabal they have to say that the universe was created with a Big Bang. Trash, of course. There is no Yahweh. It is the act of creation, not who created it. Now, notice how the star Mothalla contains the ending Allah. As I have said before, no word is empty. And in its linguistic origins and in its etymology, you can see its meanings. It is an Arabic word that means the triangle. Therefore, the triangle is Allah. And this is because the Islamic religion is a variant made by the Vatican, which is the same but adapted to the needs of the region than the Christian and Judaic religions thus composing a so-called monster of three horns, the religions Judaism, Catholicism and Islam. Again, Trinity, Triangulum. And as I have said before, Enki encompasses all that is Kabbal, Rome, Vatican and their religions. So the star Ea or Mothala is Yahweh, which is the concept of God the Son, Christ, or Enki, being that Anu, Beta, is God all-powerful and Enlil, Gamma, is the Holy Spirit because it represents the origins and the stellar influence. You have your triangle. The symbol that they make with their hands making a triangle, all the triangle that the Illuminati use. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I have a question about the Triangulum. From this solar system, the most direct access to Triangulum, is it only from planet Earth? No, the portal is very far. It doesn't matter where they come from, from this solar system. Swaru, have you visited the Triangulum? Yes, from there it doesn't look like a triangle. I do not use its portal. Our technology has made it obsolete for us. Distance 127 light year to Beta Trianguli, 63 light years to Alpha Trianguli, 112 light years 
to gamma triangle. And what have you seen that can be shared? What did you go to do there? It just happened. I didn't have much to do there. I've been all over the quadrant. And how are the beings that come from there? Mostly Elohim and Lyrian descendants and variations. About 150 interstellar civilizations there. The distance is not much, like 20 minutes SIT, ship internal time, for Susie. They are considered local stars. A question from a follower. Is there any reason, motive, or circumstance why they chose the constellation Triangulum to represent their famous triad? Or was it the best fit for their misinformation or their agenda? Greetings. It is the most important constellation for them, the basis of everything. That is why everything is a triangle for them. That is why the obelisks that they have everywhere have a triangle above. It's a look up at the triangle. From that portal came the Elohim, who mostly founded civilization on Earth. Those bearded Sumerians with wings, which various people call Anunnaki, are Elohim. But not only were they Elohim as a race, they also included Engan and Taigetans. In itself, what the Triangulum portal represents for them is the place of creation, home of the three gods of the Trinity, maximum sacred place of the cosmos, cosmic holy land. What are pyramids? They have three sides, but seen as something three-dimensional, they are a triangle, trinity, Egypt base, three base gods, Ea, Anu and Lil. Ea becomes Ya, that becomes Yahweh. Anu, which means creator, becomes in theology God Almighty. Enlil becomes Enlil becomes Elohim, Elohi race of Asterope, Pleiades, a people. Each pyramid symbolizes each of these three deities, Ea, Anu, and Li, and these are these three stars. I know the pyramids align with Orion, but they weren't built for Orion. These three stars are clearly written in Egyptian hieroglyphics as the basis of civilization and its origin for them. By contrasting it with star maps of Taigeta, we find that they, the Elohi, had bases there. But one thing, please. I had understood that the Elohi race of Asterope were Pleiadians, some with reptile souls. The same species, one within another, in the same way that a Kingu can use a human body. However, not all humans are Kingu. It depends on the plane of existence. Not only humans are containers for multiple races. But what one species does is not the same as what the other does, even though the container is the same in appearance. So this grows in complexity and is difficult to follow without all the data on the table. Some reptiles, in their physical look, the others anthropomorphic, the bearded ones of Sumeria, like Hillary Clinton and the Queen of England. They look human, but inside they are lizards. Note that they say that the Anunnaki were reptilians, however they represent them with humanomorphic 
but large bodies. And why the Trinity? And why so much symbolism? There are many reasons. The main one being that it can only be read properly by people with the right preparation. In other words, because information is power and correct information can only be given to the worthy. The Bible, New and Old Testaments are written this way. From one level something is understood, from another something else is understood. But I still don't understand why so much effort mounting so much symbolism. Because even you have to go and examine and decipher sometimes. So why so much coding of things? Why couldn't things be stated as they are? So much symbolism messes things up. You must realize that the symbolism itself is a language and quite complete. It is ancient and gave basis to Egyptian writing based on glyphs or pictograms. It is a language. You have to speak it or you won't understand. The bull symbolizing Taurus, the constellation, is thousands of years old, pre-Taimat. From a direct point of view, pictograms and symbolism is a more reliable and transparent form of communication and data recording than the written word, which is open to misinterpretation. Yes, but if you don't speak this language, you don't understand. Everything camouflaged. I honestly understand very little symbolism. But I understand that it is a language. Okay, example to clarify in passing. You enter from a black hole in the constellation of Andromeda and exit from the Sun. But if you enter through the Sun, you come out behind Taurus, wormhole entrance coming out of the Sun M33, right there. They leave there and they enter here. And going back to the pyramids, that's what they were for, to open portals using only the power of people's minds. At that level, the mind is that powerful when it is free and amplified. You don't need portals like CERN, just your mind. They were to get out of bodies and travel, yes? Yes, but it is only a body. In the astral, you have another. But why so big, the pyramids? Because they work even better that way, because of the energy potential they could generate. As I was saying to Robert, the reason why they are on planetary ley lines and on large aquifers and in this case it connects with the Nile, is because they use the difference, differential of electrical charge, of voltaic polarity between the ground and the atmosphere, clouds and stratosphere, creating a continuous and controlled flow of electrical energy for practical uses. This flow causes a torrent that is secondary, torrent that develops a specific frequency that potentiates the human or people's mind and aura with the principle of constructive interference. This causes the people inside the pyramids to have vastly increased psychic abilities of all kinds. Would the other pyramids in Bosnia and China, for example, fulfill the same function? And the Latin America ones? Yes, the same function with a different approach. But the pyramids also served to give birth to babies and also served so that a dying person had a dignified death and their soul ascended to the cosmos, amplified and without problems. 
But why did they need this? If they were interstellar beings, they had ships. They could already travel through the universe. They already had astral and psychic powers. Because I understand that they have been built before the 3D imposition. Why did they need a pyramid block on Earth for this? Because you always want to have even more mental power. And because with a perfectly functioning pyramid like that, you no longer need a spaceship. We are talking about the more advanced technology than the use of starships. More advanced than the ships? If you can manifest a ship with your mind, you don't need a ship. From a physical plane as 5D was then on Earth, yes, you need a ship. With pyramids like this, you do not need ships or dimensional portals. You are the portal. So these 5D people were aspiring towards higher dimensions. Or were pyramids made by beings who were already beyond 5D or both? Perhaps the gods of that time were really beings from beyond 5D for inhabitants of 5D colonies. The pyramids were built by a 5D Earth, but by beings with understanding far superior to 5D. And distribution of free energy was also one of its functions then, or was that secondary? That is a byproduct of the pyramids. They weren't built for just one reason. And they were on planetary ley lines, empowering and cooperating with one another. Energetically, all the pyramids are connected. And they are all over the world. It is a network of pyramids. Only its exterior is made according to each region. I need to say something important on the subject of Sumerian tablets. Why I want this to be known. My motivation to give this information. Because what is said in the Sumerian tablets that the human was created only follows the same victim pattern that humanity is under. Of, why should I make an effort if they limited me? Poor me, save me, save me. There are millions of trillions of different species in the universe. The anthropomorphic is the norm, not the exception. There are species that are very much like humans, much more than us. Others, you could not even understand them as something alive, much less as something with an interstellar civilization. It is to liberate the human being. That is the core of everything I want to share. That humans have control over themselves, over their destiny, over who they are. What I am trying to do here is free your minds. May the aliens of the Ashtar Command, Vatican Trash, save me. May an all-powerful benevolent God save me. May a messiah save me. May a good politician save me. The Sumerian tablets are part of that mental control mechanism over the population. They are for that. Anyone who works promoting them without understanding where they come from is working against the human population.